I had a colleague of mine ask me a question today through LinkedIn that I thought was a great question to answer now. It'll be good to go back probably in another six months or 12 months to see what the answer is at that time. So she said, I'd love to hear your thoughts as to how commercial real estate will pivot due to COVID and business realizing that they can work from home. You deal with more than what I deal with in commercial real estate. So I'm office leasing landlord rep and I'll speak to that, but I would love to hear also from you because you're in a different market. You're in Phoenix, Arizona, which is completely different than Virginia Beach, Virginia, but also your take on this, how is commercial real estate in general pivoting now? And what do you think it's going to look like in the next six months or so in all the different facets that you operate in? It's interesting that we're doing this, right? And I love the fact that you brought up the let's revisit this because everything is changing and everything is changing pretty quickly. I know my market extremely well and I'm kind of hyper focused on the Phoenix area and I am doing office deals. I am selling leasing and I am representing pet tenants and I'm also representing landlords. So I feel like I've got my thumb on a little bit of everything. We're seeing on the retail side, we're watching tenants go out. I've got a client that is active right now. Boy, the lease rates don't make sense. We're able to seat restaurants at 50%. The asking rate at this particular A plus site, the numbers, you just can't make the numbers work. Mm. So it's going to be tough on landlords. They were getting a rate, their tenants are departing now, and you're not going to be able to replace the same lease rates. It's just, it's, the numbers don't work. And we don't know what's going to happen. Things change every week. So in the leasing game for us to go in and actually get a deal done, it's just really challenging right now on the retail front. My so what, well, I was going to say, so what are those landlords doing? Are they seeing that? Are they changing their strategy to, to make deals work or they're just kind of riding it out? They're riding it out. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think six months from now, when we talk about this again, I think that's when the lease rates are going to start to dip and there'll be more activity because of that. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's crazy to think that they're, they're going to keep the lease rates the same. And I get every, every owner is in a different position. So some of these guys are going to need tenants and some of them can sit on it for a while and just kind of see what happens. Being a deal maker, I'd like to see them have a little bit of flexibility, maybe get some free rent out of it. But then on the tenant side, you got to look at their shoes as well because they don't know what's going to happen. Right. And that's what we're seeing too is in the office market in particular in Virginia Beach and in Hampton Roads area of Virginia, that landlords are saying, well, either A, I can't sit on it for a while, or B, I'll offer a bunch of free rent, but I just don't want to pay anything towards tenant improvements because I want to keep my cash. And, okay. and so the, the pivot has been, let's get people in here and I'll take it with no rent right now, knowing that in three months or four months or six months that hopefully that this business will be able to start paying rent at that point, but I just won't have any cash outlay to deal with. So I 100% agree. If I was the landlord, I would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely get them in there and get it going. I think with restaurants, there's so much personalization that needs to go into those particular spaces. And I have ventured outside of my norm. I did a medical deal during COVID. I'm doing office deals. So those have been interesting to see as well. The ones that started pre-COVID, there was tenant improvement required they went the distance. Mm -hmm. Those deals all went the distance. And we did have an interesting deal that I was involved with as well that was a strip center that was for sale during COVID. Four tenants, none of which were paying rent, and the deal did go through with a, not a huge hair, haircut, but there was a haircut on the price. Yeah. And so other than that, are you seeing, is there a particular type of property that people are looking for or that there's, they see that there's opportunity and that they're really just ready to pounce on that, you know, something coming on the market for sale or anything specific? 
Last week, I took a new listing on a residential office. Back in the day in Phoenix, there were homes that were built on what are now major streets. Okay. A lot of developers like is to go into the residential markets on these main streets and they take the residences and they turn them into small offices. Gotcha. So you get lots of users like lawyers and dentists, smaller footprints that will take down these buildings at an affordable cost, but still have a cool little office. So last week, I, it was actually two weeks ago now, I took the listing. Last week, I shot the video. I have not actually posted the video anywhere. Today, we're going into escrow. I think those smaller contained offices in our market are going to be hot. That well, so, yeah, and that's a good point because you said the word contained, where people want to make sure that they have space away from all these other jokers, you know, because you just don't know who you're getting in an elevator with or who you have touched a door behind or something like right. that. I think that's, you're definitely right on that where people are gonna look to, well, if I'm not gonna maintain an office space in a tower, where can I go to still have that? So I was in the office the other day. I'm not going into the office every day. I'm going into the office very little, to be honest with you. And I was talking with the gentleman. We are in, boy, I don't know how many square feet our tower is, but it's four stories tall, and there is a restaurant in the building that caters to the employees. And he told me there's generally six to 700 people in the office building. That's how he bases his volume on his restaurant. He has been closed down since COVID. He said, on average, the landlord said that we're having 100 people in the building. It's like you go down, and I used to have to battle to get parking. Parking structure is wide open below the building, and that's just what I'm seeing, and that's what I'm feeling. So I don't know if that's happening in every office building, but my assumption is it's happening. Yeah, and it is in our area as well. And so we, we're seeing that the folks have not all come back into our tower, and they're not planning to until 2021 at the earliest. We've got a lot of nationals who are dictating what's happening at the local level, right? So you've got these big, huge firms and they're saying, well, we're headquartered in, you know, Atlanta or something, or maybe even New York. And because the numbers of coronavirus were high a few months ago in these bigger places, then they kind of shut everything down regardless of what the numbers were like in those other smaller cities. That's keeping a lot of people out. Whether or not there's any kind of a high risk area or not, it's just now they're dependent upon what does their national, what does corporate say that they can do. So we're definitely seeing that. Um, so what about any other things that you're seeing landlords doing to kind of pivot to get those tenants in? An example that I could think of for us is just looking at the different types of amenities to offer. When the folks do come back into the office, eventually they will, right? Um, what do they have in the building that they didn't have before that are going to make people feel good beyond the, you know, hand sanitizing stations. One of my landlords is talking about doing some sort of outdoor fitness area because we're seeing that people want outdoor space. They also want some place to do some fitness and they want place to spread out and even have lunch outside. So they're talking about kind of trying to incorporate that. Are you seeing any kind of creative ideas for amenities? I think us being in Phoenix, we've always kind of had that sort of stuff. There's not a fitness center. I'll tell you a fitness story, though. Okay. I work out at Lifetime, and it's a brand new diamond club. It's three stories high, and the rooftop has the pool and, like, a beautiful grass area, manufactured grass, and a huge seating area. And what they've done to pivot, because all gyms have to stay closed in Phoenix, is very, very limited use but the swimming pool is open. So they're doing like aerobics in the pool with social distancing. So it's a huge pool, but there's no more than 15 people in the entire pool at once. And then they're doing outdoor yoga on the other side and they're doing outdoor spin classes. So those type of little pivots and granted the club is like, this was the newest hottest club that just opened in the end of February. And when I go in there, there's, 
20, 30 people max. So it's great for me, but for the business, it's just like, oh, yeah. I'm feeling for them. One thing that I am seeing at absolutely every restaurant, though, is their huge signage as far as delivery to the car. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing at the shopping centers is dedicated parking spaces. That way, items could be brought out to you. Best Buy had a really cool setup where literally you go, you walk up or pull up, and they bring items to you, kind of shopping it. You're shopping in the parking lot. So there are a lot of things that are happening as far as the pivot goes. It's just longevity and staffing and everything else that comes along with it. I just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it, you're right. Can businesses sustain that long term is the question. And it makes sense now. So I think that's the big takeaway too for commercial real estate owners, these building owners is to look at what can we do right now to make things work, but in the long term, you know, make sure that you're looking at the big picture and not just making some rash decision about what's happening right right now in 2020. Because it's one thing to upgrade your HVAC and like spend all this money and do all these things. And then guess what? We have short term memories. Unless it is really going to be something that you are putting into your building that's going to make sense long term, I would say keep your money, figure out, you know, short term little fixes that are going to make people happy in your building. But then other than that, we're going to forget. We're going to go on into 2021. And I, I have a feeling it's good. We're going to look back and say, oh, yeah, what we had all that time off and time away from the office. And what was that all about? It's it, that's bound to happen. Interesting to hear. It. it sounds just like everything that you're experiencing is the same thing probably most other locations are experiencing as well, even though you're in a much larger city. Even I think on the smaller smaller scale, people are kind of seeing the exact same things. Something interesting. So I'm doing a lot of canvassing right now. I'm doing a lot of mask wearing and just going out and literally putting my eyes on everything. I saw a quick serve restaurant that would look like they were going out. They were literally pulling the signs off the building. So I went and started talking to some of the construction guys and they just kind of filled me in who introduced me. And I'm not going to say the brand to the director of real estate who happened to be standing there. And I was just kind of shooting it with him. And I said, you know, what are your guys' outlooks? What's going on with the building? So they were just doing a full on revamp of the building because business just wasn't there. So they shut the whole thing down and they were gutting it and completely starting with their newer co concept. And I shared with them that I had some new development sites on the other side of town. And he said that they're tossing around the idea of having zero seating restaurants. 100% walk up or drive through. Mm. So I don't know if that's a knee jerk or if that's going to make sense in the future, but it's interesting to think that that's where their, that's where their plan is headed. Well, and they are doing it right now during a time that makes sense too, as far as not having the customers. It sounds like there are going to be people, people like that that are able to take advantage of the time that they have, that downtime. We saw that in one of our office buildings as well. It just kind of worked out. It didn't happen because of coronavirus, but they were in the middle of doing this whole lobby renovation. And luckily, it was a great time to do it because nobody was in the office. And that's what we were kind of telling people around April timeframe, if you have these capital things that you need to get done, now's the time to do it when there aren't people in their offices and that you're not gonna be messing up their day basically by doing all this construction, so. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah, absolutely. I don't wanna take up all of your day. I really appreciate you just chatting with me because it's cool to hear perspectives from other parts of the country and people who deal in other types of commercial real estate than I do. So I really appreciate that. Is there anything else that we didn't touch on that you think is super important that you want to get out there today? You know, I did have a conversation with the owner of an office building, a smaller office building that I sold to him. He was trying to kind of figure out how he wanted to retenant it. And he was a multifamily guy that had a bunch of 1031 exchange money. And that's how he went, got into this office building. And I found his theory interesting. He said that he'd be open to selling 
this office building, which it's a two-story, almost 26,000 square foot garden style office. Everything has individual doors. And he is going to ask quite a bit more for it because he thinks that tenants are going to flood in from the downtown area. Mm-hmm. So I just, I'm finding everything interesting right now. I really am. And I'm really looking forward to talking with you in like six months or 12 months. Yeah. And then compare this video to the new one and see what actually happened and how things are moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. We could probably do this every month and it would be completely different from the next time or from the last time. So we but, can do this yeah. every week and it'll be yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks again, Eddie. I really appreciate your time. Hopefully if anybody is uh, doing anything in the Phoenix area, they'll contact you. So how do they do that though? What, how do they I'll get in touch? I'll throw my cell phone out there. That's the easiest way to get hold of me. And it's 602-510-2204. My coach said you always have to say it twice. 602-510-2204. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It was nice talking with you. You too.